StayOnTheCourt.com podcast, the show that helps aging basketball players stay on the court and continue playing basketball or the sport that they love. We talk injuries, rehab, coaching youth sports, pickup game mishaps, and oh yeah, that guy in your court that wants to fight everybody. Our motto is, we don't stop playing because we grow old, we grow old because we stop playing. My dad could teach and coach with such a presence because he knew that was what God wanted him to do. He loved it. He could have made a lot more money doing something else, but he's the richest man in town because of his relationships. Look around. My dad didn't just teach reading and coach basketball. The greater purpose for him was teaching life lessons to make young people into strong women and men ready to face the challenges of the world. As Winnie the Pooh said, how lucky we are to have someone that makes saying goodbye so hard. Just a couple more things I want to say. Sorry, I'm a little long-winded like my dad. First, a poem. You held my hand when I was small. You caught me when I fell. The hero of my childhood and of latter years as well. Every time I think of you, my heart just fills with pride. And though I'll always miss you, Dad, I know you're by my side. In laughter and in sorrow, in in sunshine and in rain, I know you're watching over me until we meet again. One last thing that helps me when I'm struggling is that it's not goodbye, it's see you later. And he's with us right now, watching over us. Welcome to the StayOnTheCourt.com podcast. This is your host, Troy Wallace, as always, broadcasting from the beautiful studios in Omaha, Nebraska. We're going to do a, I'm going to call it a special episode. If you've been listening to some of our episodes, we definitely like to keep it light, upbeat, comical in some some cases. But today is going to be a little bit more of a a somber episode. So something I found really inspirational, but at the same time, very sad. We live in Omaha, Nebraska, and there are some smaller communities that are growing up around Omaha that are growing as people push out to the suburbs. There is a town named Gretna, Nebraska, and uh, unfortunately, they lost their head basketball coach, Brad Feakin, to cancer just uh, within the last two weeks. It's always sad, but he was only 48. It was a rare form of cancer. I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. And the saddest and most devastating is, I'll just read from the Omaha World Herald article. It says, Feakin's life taken at age 48 on December 30th by a rare form of cancer. Was celebrated warmly Monday inside Gretna's Journey Church while snow swirled outside. We've had uh, quite a bit of weather here over the last uh, couple of weeks. Fika survived by his wife, Jenny, and three kids. Rylan, 13, Maylee, 11, John, 6. Just heartbreaking. If there are a couple things that you take away from this podcast, number one is I will put a link. I do believe that they are still doing um, some fundraising for him and his family. And so I will link that in the YouTube description. If this is on YouTube or if you're consuming it on your podcast, I will put it in the show notes. I think they're collecting money through the Gretna uh, Public Schools here in Nebraska. And I suspect that they will keep that up for a while. So if you feel inclined to donate to that, it's definitely worthwhile. I have children similar ages to his, so it really hits home. I started coaching youth sports about three years ago as my son hit third grade. And I'm constantly trying to learn from existing coaches. I did not know Coach Brad Feakin. Came familiar with him a little bit on the news. I did hear about him having some issues with cancer last year when they ran a big fundraiser for him out in Gretna. And it was on some of the local news here. You know, but otherwise, you know, I didn't know him personally. The second item that I want to have you pay attention to is an article that was written by, uh, his name is Dirk Chatlin, and he was a longtime sports writer for the Omaha World Herald. He left a couple of years ago, and I think he's doing some freelancing. And then uh, there's a startup newspaper here called the Flatwater Free Press. Take you back, kind of how I got wind of this initially, is lots of times during breakfast, my wife, who's not super into sports, she'll sit down, read me some of the stories of the day, what's going on from the Omaha World Herald. And one day she started reading an article that was about Coach Feakin, and I was listening to it, and it was just just a really moving and excellent article. And I said, kind of half-joking to her, wow, it sounds like Dirk Chatlin's back at the Omaha World Herald. 
And she said, well, he's not, but evidently they're able to publish articles that are initially written at the Flatwater Free Press. I was very glad to hear Dirk's voice. When I had time, I went and read the whole article. And this was around December 13th that this article came out. And this article is still available on their website, so I will link it. It is just a a really, really well done article. Matter of fact, I'm going to read you a little bit about Dirk to give you some idea for those people that are in the national audience, not here locally in Omaha. Here's a quick bio of Dirk Chatlin. It says, a lifelong Nebraskan, spent 18 years at the Omaha World Herald and authored 24th and Glory, a portrait of North Omaha history and its epic generation of athletes. He's a five-time Nebraska sports writer of the year. So just, I'll call him a treasure of Nebraska sports writing. I grew up in Nebraska and almost everything that he writes hits home for me, especially a lot of the historical things that he will do deep dives in and just really in-depth fantastic writing. What was interesting as I read through his article is he disclosed that he was actually a neighbor of uh, Brad Feekins. It appears to me that um, he's been following his story for obviously a while as a neighbor. And then when he was diagnosed with cancer a couple of years ago, uh, had a front row seat. So it's almost like a, a Michael Lewis style um, article or piece of writing where Michael Lewis a lot of times is embedded deeply in whatever he's writing about. Just a a fantastic piece, sad, yes, but really inspirational about Coach Feakin. And so I'm just going to pull out some highlights of some things that, you know, I read in a couple of articles, one published by the Omaha World Herald after Brad Feakin's death on December 30th, and then also quite a bit from Dirk Chatlin's article that was published on December 13th. We had a, a rare type of cancer. And a lot of the articles didn't talk about specifically what it was, but then I finally did find one that named it, and it was called a neuroendocrine tumor. I will link up this Mayo Clinic article on it. It says neuroendocrine tumors are cancers that begin in specialized cells called neuroendocrine cells. Neuroendocrine cells have traits similar to those of nerve cells and hormone-producing cells. Neuroendocrine tumors are rare and can occur anywhere in the body. Most neuroendocrine tumors occur in the lungs, appendix, small intestine, rectum, and pancreas. I have uh, neuroendocrine cancer. They found some, some cancer on my liver and my spleen and up my spine. I know I'm gonna just heap a bunch of praise on Dirk Chatlin's article, just really, really moving. So again, I will strongly encourage everybody to go check out that article. And also, if you feel inclined, you know the link's gonna be there to donate to Brad Feekin's memory. All right. So I'm going to go through, and I, again, I didn't know Coach Feakin, but I think uh, some of these things that I pulled out will, will tell the story of the type of guy and coach that he was. Uh, I think this is one of his assistant coaches. So it says, Brad really didn't care about winning and losing. I want you to stop and think about that. Gretna assistant coach Bill Hurd said, Feak may be the most insanely competitive person I've ever been around, but he did it right. Winning was a byproduct of doing things the right way. For him... It was the process of winning, making people better. The process of winning allowed everyone around him to lift themselves in the community they were part of. That story went on to say, you know, Brad Ficken's life story wasn't measured by his career record. That didn't really matter to long-term Gretna Boys basketball coach. Now, I've read a couple of different articles that he was a seventh grade teacher, and he was especially adept at getting seventh grade boys to uh, read better. That was kind of a specialty in the ed- education world. So we're going to come down. Here's another excerpt from Creighton men's basketball coach McDermott. says he chimed in, if we all impacted young people's lives like Brad did, the world would be a much better place. My thoughts and prayers are with his family during the difficult time. RIP, my friend. And I, I know from reading some things that Coach McDermott was integral in getting together some of the fundraisers for Coach Feakin while he was still alive. Now some items that were in Dirk Chatlin's article. And again, just go read the article. What I'm pulling out is just the tip of the iceberg. Dirk started out his article with a subheadline that said, one of Nebraska's best basketball coaches loves wind sprints, hates texting, demands accountability, and refuses to give an inch. His hoops, golden rules are being tested outside the gym walls. So again, this was written on December 13th before he passed away. 
So I'll read a couple more excerpts that I pulled out of here. It says, toughness, he growls at the boys, is not pushing and shoving. Tough is not talking big. Tough is doing things right over and over and over and over. Longer than the other guy, because it means more to you. So these couple of excerpts, I just kind of speak to him as, you know, the his style when he was teaching, his enthusiasm. So I'm going to read a couple of these stanzas from uh, Chatlin's article. He seems like the youngest and oldest 48-year-old on earth, simultaneously. Sometimes he acts eight, sometimes 88. Take the technology. The seventh grade reading teacher might be the only Gretna employee left who budgets for overhead projector bulbs. Any computer task prompts a call for help. Email, he writes three-quarters of the message in the subject line. Google Drive, his assistants won't even give him access to scouting reports and practice plans because he'll screw up the document. Once Vic needed to request access to an assistant's Google Doc, he got so irritated, he just kept pushing the button. Bill Hurd received 25 notifications. Texting, he hasn't come around yet. He prefers to ignore them and respond with phone calls. That's just so perfect. I'm 52, so he's a couple years younger than me. I think there's some of us out there that are still fighting the power, and we just prefer a phone call over a text. He goes on to say, if absolutely necessary, he'll engage. Like when his youngest of three children arrived, Feek sent a one-word obligatory text to close friends, born. Here's another item that I enjoyed. Once Feek noticed an opposing team trying to decode his signals. He didn't just respond with fake calls, but the most ridiculous fake calls. Picture one of the state's most accomplished coaches standing at half court shouting a dummy play, walrus, walrus. Now, this comes back to his effectiveness as a teacher. This is from his principal. This is year 28 for me with Gretna Public Schools, Principal Matt Brueggemann said. He is hands down the best teacher I've seen. How we can get a seventh grade kid to buy in and read books is amazing. That voice, you can't make that up. You can't put a new teacher in his classroom and say, sound like him. I had the privilege of having my dad as a teacher for a little while. Whenever we would enter his classroom, he would always go, big day, big day. <laughs> this became a cool thing to say. Every time he would enter the classroom, all the students would say, big day, big day. Not every teacher could pull this off. Students might laugh or make fun of him. But he had this confidence, this energy that drew people to him and made them want to join in and be a part of whatever he was doing. Article goes on and talks a little bit about when he was first diagnosed. And, you know, I think this also uh, speaks to how Coach Feekin must have been. So he said, in November 2021, just weeks before basketball season, Feek spent an afternoon carrying branches out of his backyard. Nothing too heavy. When he woke up sore, he worried. Feek's family history is littered with heart problems. Scans revealed something else, lesions on his liver, cancer. In those first conversations, from the locker room to the classroom, nobody knew what to say except Feek. I'm going to beat this. I want my kids to have a dad. My perspective, along with my team and along with my people who care about me, you know that this is something I will win and I will beat and it'll be okay. And I'm not, I'm not in the ground yet. Oh, that's a tough one. Um, goes on to say that first winter, despite countless appointments and blood draws, uh, Fink barely missed any basketball. The Dragons started four and four, including a 25 point loss to Bellevue West. The next week, Feek's whole staff tested positive for COVID-19. No matter, they upset Bellevue West and rolled off 14 of 16 wins. The district final, a double overtime thriller against Lincoln Southwest, squeezed everything out of Feek. Afterward, as his team cut down the nets, he disappeared down a hallway to sob alone. A week later, in the opening round at stake, Gretna blew an 11-point lead in the final three minutes. When the Dragons came to the bench before overtime, Feek stood in front of the players and growled, We're good. He was right. They got their first Class A state tourney win in school history. So Gretna is a, a, a community that's grown quite a bit over the last, I'd say, 15 or so years. And in Nebraska, we organize things as Class A, Class B, and then there's C1, C2, D1, D2. So Gretna was always a Class B school. And then over the last probably seven to 10 years has grown into the largest class in Nebraska, which is Class A. All right, so now we're going to go back and hit a couple of lighter things about Coach Feekin. So he, the article goes on to say he prefers nicknames as corny as possible. I, I just love this. Anybody that's ever told a dad joke will find this a little bit comedic. In this case, it said a boy named Lund became Lunderstruck. A girl 
Nix became Sir Nix a lot. When a student named Tori complained about her nickname, Tori Story, Fee called her mom and dad to sign off so he could keep using it. He was so proud. My dad was always fun. We would have our weekly cleaning night. Everyone in our family hated it, except for my dad, for two reasons. One, he didn't do any of it. <laughs> and two, he could torment us with it. The song Ladies' Night turned into Cleaning Night. He would sing, oh, it's cleaning night, and it feels all right. I guess it's cleaning night, oh, what a night, oh, what a night. My dad sometimes showed love in strange ways. One summer, when I was around seven, if I got in trouble, I'd have to stand by the street and hold a sign that said, drive safely. <laughs> Our average punishment was around 15 minutes, which is really fun when you're seven years old, watching your friends play, but you can't because you have to hold a sign that says, drive safely. This paragraph is something that I just think of a dad or especially as a teacher, and I'm not a teacher. You know, it's just a, a hard skill to master. But uh, it says, Feek has a hard conversation with somebody every day. Former point guard Trent Miller said, there are so few people that are willing to do that. He can't live with himself if he's responsible for you and he doesn't hold you accountable. That's why he's so annoying. That raspy voice, stupid whistle, it doesn't waver. This is the last item that I pulled out of the article. I mean, it's all impactful. So I'm not going to rank order, you know, what's, what's most impactful. But it talks about, well, I'll just read the line. It says, a 24-year-old from Shadron stops by Feek's house to hug him one more time. I wish I could trade places with you, Trey Brown said. Feek's response, I wouldn't let you. So, again, I encourage you to go read the entire article. But it goes into a little more detail about this, I'll say, boy, now, now a man, who transferred in from Shadron, Nebraska, after le losing his father. And I think Coach Feek became kind of a surrogate father for him. It was very impactful just to hear about this guy stopping uh, by his house and saying that it's definitely a moving situation. Again, I want this little piece, even though I didn't know him to be a celebration of Coach Brad Feek's. I know this article was very impactful on me, so I wanted to get it out there. Definitely check out Dirk Chatlin's article, which I will link in the show notes and in the YouTube description if this goes on YouTube. And if you feel inclined after reading that, I will link up to the fundraising that they are doing for Coach Feekin and his family. I believe they're still collecting donations through the Gretna Public School. So really just, even though it's extremely sad, but very motivational just kind of makes you examined, you know, what you're doing in the world when there's somebody like this making this sort of impact. We have sad news to report out of Gretna. Longtime boys basketball coach Brad Feakin died Saturday morning at 48 after a two-year battle with neuroendocrine cancer. Feakin led the Dragons for more than 20 years, winning back-to-back -back state titles in 2016 and 2017. His team choosing to play in their Metro Holiday Tournament quarterfinal against Papillion La Vista South. Tied at 47 with less than 10 seconds to go, Gretna's Landon Pekorski takes it up the floor and hits the floater as time expires. Pointing to the sky to his coach. Call it what you want, divine intervention, destiny, practice makes perfect. That was meant to be. Coach has practiced that situation with him 100 times. And so... Tonight, what you see is the accumulation of a lot of reps with Coach and him in a gym when no one's around. So that is it. Very hard to, to say uh, hit the like button and subscribe. So I will just sign it off until the next episode of stayinthecourt.com. Here we go.